Hello! Welcome to another video by ICE. My name is Till, I am from Germany, and I've been living in Hong Kong for something like 10 years already. My name is Min, I'm from Myanmar, and I've been living around 6 months in Hong Kong. Hello, my name is Matteo, and I've been living for 2 years now in Hong Kong. Hi, my name is Kieran, I've been living in Hong Kong all my life. I think Hong Kongers are not very noisy. In some other countries, it's very common to go out there and greet everyone. Yeah. Hong Kongers are not like that. Yeah. Very busy people, uh, stress people. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, stress, stress. Oh, yeah, definitely stress. Stress, yeah. stress tired. Yeah. Fall asleep when they're like on a bus. There's a lot of things, but I feel like sometimes there is a lot of disrespect or like maybe lack of cultural awareness. That's my stereotype. Rude service, have good fashion sense, rude while speaking, speak fluent English, worship everything foreign, live in a small place, <laughs> salary slaves, long working hours, lack of yeah. empathy, empathy, materialistic, yeah. Don't like to smile, fast pace, and friendly, mm -hmm. impatient, short memories. Queuing. They wait in the lines, in oh, canteens, in mm. MTR. We don't yeah, queue yeah. at the canteen, we don't queue at the restaurant, we just like, you know, wait for the waiter to come. I love that. I think it's great. I think yeah. so, yes. Because everything is smoother this way, right? Yeah. We have a video on this, by the way, of what we think about Hong Kong culture. Maybe you can click somewhere here and then you'll see. Rude while speaking. Rude mm. while... Yeah, I, I agree. It's not very yeah, it's Hong Kong. Like, Hong Kongers, I think, no. are quite polite. So I agree yeah. with that. Okay, maybe I think they are rude actually. Okay, when I when I first came to Hong Kong, I go out of the the, the plane and I'm like, oh, nice Hong Kong people, interesting. Oh, this way. And then I came to my first cab in Hong Kong, and the guy only speaks Cantonese. And he's just shouting at me in Cantonese. I'm like, what's go? What's wrong? And I don't stand. And then he just continues to speak in Cantonese or in Chinese. I don't know. Yeah, my first experience like very rude people. Yeah. But then after I met some friends, I went, okay, no, no rude. I, read at all, yeah. I feel like it depends on the settings as well because sir, of course there are rude people in Hong Kong. It's not the Hong Kong culture it's, or it doesn't generalize the Hong Kong people but there are certain rude people that just wouldn't like try to get to know you and they would be rude, a little bit rude in conversating or like communicating. I think I think totally not rude mm -hmm. in my experience. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call this rude. I yes. call this culturally different. Mm -hmm. Almost mm -hmm. all conversations are actually polite. So even if people maybe don't like you, they often wouldn't tell you in your face. I agree with the ranking. Yeah, I didn't experience that much rude service in Cha Chan Tang. Uh, I feel like it's usually because like these Cha Chan Tang, most of the employee majority is like Chinese speakers, right? Mm -hmm. So when foreigners go there, it's kind of hard to communicate or tell them like what you want. So maybe it's like communication problem. Yeah. So Rude service and ta tang just as I said before, I think like it can appear rude, but once you get used to it, it's just yeah, a sure. way of doing things here. They can serve you food and they can handle all these people, and it's another way of caring actually. It's just yeah. first time it feels a bit weird. I like it. I've eaten. <laughs> the only thing I don't like is attention. And in a ta tang, they're also busy, so you don't usually get a lot of attention unless. They see I'm a Guaylo and then they start oh. thinking, oh, your Chinese is so good. Or, yo, you can read Chinese and they want to get me English menu. And then it's like, I just want to, just don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me. I don't like what you do. Just let me order my food. Yeah. I've, I've been to Chata Tang, but the thing is, like, it's too fast for me. It's like, just, okay, what do you want? Okay, order now. Oh. And then, okay, eat. And then go. <laughs> and then I'm like, I want to enjoy the place. I want to enjoy the food, the people. So I feel like. I don't go very, it's too, too fast for me. I don't ag agree with uh, the queuing up being a benign. In my campus, uh, we would ha have this shuttle bus and we need to wait for the shuttle bus. And sometimes the line can be twice or thrice longer than the actual given space. Mm. Even in the rain, they will wait. For my country, if a line is that long, we just walk. I've seen people lining up for restaurants for like two hours yes. to eat some food. In other countries, they wouldn't do this. So like, no food is worth waiting for two hours. <laughs> yes. So I, I agree with you. Like, queuing up should be higher up, actually. This should be higher. 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 This should be higher. I've seen amazing outfits in Hong Kong. Yes. It should be like number three, number four. Number like one. That. In my country, uh, so. university would be the the hub for fa fashion. So the university yeah. students, especially the girls, they will wear their best, but even their best comparing to Hong Kong looks like pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, this quote really got in. I give Hong Kong fashion 100 10 out of 10. Uh, uh, what about the, the guys? Oh, the guys, they are also very, you know, Casual? different. No, different. The guys are also, you They're know, also fashion. Fashion. Uh. fashion sense. So, Matteo, you are uh, French, right? What yeah. do you think about Hong Kong fashion? French are famous for fashion and beauty. Yeah, but I think it's like completely different from what I saw in France. So it's like, 
also cool because I saw like different style and I think it's also stylish as French I would say it's like I would not wear that in France because I would look weird I think Oh. That's the way I'm saying. I think the reason I said the Burmese girls look like pajamas is because, like, <laughs> though we they try to wear their best, they are strictly adhering to one style. Oh. In Hong Kong, they explore, you know, the boys and girls they explore all avenues. Number six is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree. Like it is up there, but I wouldn't make it number one. I know quite a lot of people that when they do relax, like it's almost like a hobby, is to go shopping. And I think that's weird as someone <laughs> from a country where a hobby is going out into nature or mm. building something or making something. From my point of view, if your hobby is to go shopping, I call that a materialistic culture. I think corresponding factor will be they have a good fashion sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I feel like Hong Kongers are very nervous about earning enough money to like survive. So much money goes to food that you eat one time, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's a bit different from like, you know, clothes or this kind of materialism, but I think it's also a kind of materialism that like, mm. even if you do earn money, all you know what to do with it is like spending it on food or like handbag or stuff. I, I disagree because I think Hong Kongers, especially university students, they really know how to have a good time. A clubbing, <laughs> yacht parties, you know, uh -huh. I don't think they are materialistic, wow. but they really know how to use it. I agree with some of what yeah. you say, yeah. but I think, I still I think Hong Kongers are somewhat materialistic. Yeah. Don't want to be <laughs> <laughs> I think the working environment here is very stressful. Very yeah, stressful and very heavy, and I think that can make someone very impatient and maybe bind it to their jobs because you use the term salary slaves. I consider myself a salary sa a slave as well because I was born in Hong Kong and I, I feel like in my mind it's always like how do I earn more money, how do I spend my time in earning money, that would apply to me as well. And number five, I think it's a good position for that. Yeah. So this is kind of a bit off topic, but I do think Hong Kong is very efficient at what they yes. do. So whether it's government or whether it's companies yes. or mm -hmm. whether it's any kind of administration, like university yes. administration, and maybe this goes together with this attitude of being impatient, of working culture, of mm. efficiency and, and, and salary slaves. The impatience, I think it's something else. It's this maybe stimulation, a lot of stimulation from young age of school, homework, there's always something that you need to do and maybe that trains you up to be always up for the next thing. Number three. Number three. I think people should know what working conditions in other countries are like. It's not a really good one. In Myanmar, they take very long lunch breaks. They will like, you know, eat this traditional salad, you know, they will chit chat, <laughs> gossip. One time I had, I had to go to this uh, government office and I had to wait all day to get a signature. In Myanmar, the government offices, they stop working at 3. <laughs> oh. What? Really? Oh. 3 but, you, but you said they had a long lunch time as well. Yeah. <laughs> so two hours lunch you, and then stop at 3. After 3, they don't accept anything anymore. I mean, they would start opening the building early, right? Actually, they would start receiving people like around 10, 11. So they get paid like... Good they time. get paid, uh, I mean, good for them, but you know, internationally not good, but enough for them. Okay. Oh. They just go there, have fun. It's like their leisure time, yeah. but also they're working. Yeah, kinda. they're working. After three, you can't do anything anymore. They will be there, but... They'll just hang out. Yeah, yeah wow. no work. Wow. 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 Yeah. Live yeah. in a small place. Oh. Oh. How did you feel when you first saw Hong Kong's flat? Terra. <laughs> yeah. I see these some Google photos about oh, the true, neighborhoods yeah. in the Mong Kok yeah. and, and I feel like it's it's too inhumane to live like that. Yeah, I guess it's because of like Hong Kong's limited land. Mm. They don't really have a lot of land, so yes. it's very valuable. Yeah, too many people as well. Population is high. Burmese has has a value like in owning a property. Mm. Uh, they want to have a garden. I hear this saying from my father a lot. If you want to happy for one year, get married. But if you want to happy for forever, get a garden. I have I have like two opinions on this. Like first, I think. There is some politics as well. It's not just mm -hmm. lots of people, little space. There is a lot of po politics that goes into land use and property developers and MTR and ownership rights and stuff. So I think there actually is space in Hong Kong. But second, I think the whole rest of the world can also copy a little bit of that. Yes, living in those some sort of Tongfong places, I lived in those as well. But for a certain stage of your life, I think it's okay for one or two years. I actually think it's totally doable as long as we have windows. Like whenever I go back to Germany, I freak out how much space there is everywhere. And I always think, who's going to clean this all and vacuum it all and wipe it all? So I think Hong Kong lack of space provides minimalism, which is good for the planet. Like less stuff to own, less stuff to produce. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> no. What? The weather. The what? weather. You are oh. dying right now. Oh. I'm dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask the hijabi. The weather. Okay, yeah. the weather is a problem. It's not good. But other than that, I really do feel comfortable in Hong Kong, though. Mm. I don't know if I would have the same like sense of uh, security or like comfortableness mm. like in other in any other country. Yeah, but still for me, the weather is the number one factor. <laughs> I'm just literally dying in Hong Kong. It's like the weather is like I go out one second and, and I'm sweaty. Yes, what is going on? Same, it's same, the humidity. Same. I can't yes. do it. Like, you know, it's... I came from a country and with the average temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. If you go into the sun without a shade, you feel hot right here, but you, you won't sweat like too much. But here, 25, <laughs> everywhere is like hot. <laughs> it's not hot, everywhere is sweat, sweaty. You walk a few steps and you are already ruined. Okay, but I, I also agree, I, I do like Hong Kong in many ways. I agree with the heat, yeah. that's the toughest part in summer. But everything else, apart from the heat and apart from the difficult politics right now, but oh, everything yeah. else is amazing. Like the safety, yes, what you said. Hong Kongers often don't appreciate how safe the place mm. is compared to any other place in the world. At midnight, as a girl, you can just walk around, oh, nothing yeah, will happen yeah. to you. Incredibly safe, diverse food, has seasons, even though it's hot in summer, they have nice temperature at some other times. Everything yeah. is fast and efficient. Mm -hmm. Transportation is the best in the world, I believe, oh. public transportation. It ticks a lot of boxes, at least for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the minimalism of living. If you afford enough to live a middle class apartment like life, then definitely it's one of the best places, I believe, in the world. I agree with Tilia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are great. I met people I wouldn't have met in France, like international vibes, mm -hmm. you know. I met in France, like French people and French people. Here I can meet so many people from many yeah. countries. I think yeah, it just open your mind like about the world. If you come in Hong Kong, yeah, you just like yeah, just blow your mind. Would you like be real? Till would you? Yes, for a while, but I don't know politically what happens like in twenty years, thirty years. But right now, still yes, I do like Hong Kong people. Yeah. Really like the mix of critical thinking, curiosity, humbleness, smartness, mm -hmm. openness. I really do like the kind of Hong Kong mindset. I do like the energy of Hong Kong youth. I just hope they will be empowered and they will be allowed to develop the way that the Hong Kongers' mind allows them to do. So as long as politics allows it, I believe Hong Kong can be great. And also I think like in the long term, if I want to stay in Hong Kong, I need to learn Cantonese. Because without Cantonese, you cannot do so many stuff, I think, like you know, read the menu, I guess. So yeah, I think to be an independent and live like an enjoyable life, you have to learn Chinese. That's, yeah. that's the way to go. But it takes some time for a foreigner to learn Cantonese, yeah. Yeah, for me, I don't have a fixed plan. I do know that for the moment, I do want to stay in Hong Kong. But like, far future, I don't see myself in Hong Kong. It's a small place with a lot of different types of people. The last two questions are very serious, and that's why I didn't say anything. Okay, I, I have a tendency for home because um, I think that Hong Kong is a very nice place, but at the same time, it lacks some of the colors. Uh, in Hong Kong, I'm a color person now because I, when I see Hong Kong, I see a very airy blue color everywhere, the hazy blue. The point I want to say is that Hong Kong is a place where dreams can be possible. A place which is safe, a place where you can walk around and leave your stuff without having to worry about your back or your mm. things and you can trust in people and there exists a harmony in Hong Kong where everyone can live peacefully if things are not going to change. Hong Kong is a logically a very good place to stay. Okay, so this was another take on how we as foreigners feel like Hong Kong is like. But I hope you stay in touch with us so you can comment, uh, let us know what you believe. You can subscribe to us, of course. You'll get updated on new videos and you can find us on our social media. We actually do lots of events even. So if you're in Hong Kong, maybe you can join us in the office and learn about the world together. I hope we can all become a big family here. Okay, so stay in touch, subscribe, follow us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.